Welcome back, everyone, to Aspire to Lead, where we will be discussing the visions, inspirations, and experiences from top educational leaders. My name is Joshua Stamper, and you can connect with me on Twitter or on Instagram at Joshua double underscore Stamper. Hi, everybody. This is Charlie Peck. I have the Thriving Educator Podcast, and I'm here with Joshua Stamper. Josh, you're doing this for your podcast, too, so tell everybody what, what your podcast is. Yeah, so I am Joshua Stamper, and I have the Aspire to Lead podcast, and so super excited to record with you today, Charlie, and having a shared podcast. I know. This is very unusual to do this all at once, but there's a great reason why we're doing this. Okay, so I know you are excited, and I'm excited. We've made this announcement, but we are writing a book together, so sure. maybe you can tell people why we got together, because you're the one who reached out to me, and I am just grateful. It's true. So I had this, and I've had this in the back of my mind for a while, and, and it's something that we both speak on, but uh, we've been connected through the Teach Better team in a variety of different aspects, and I was on your podcast, and you were on my podcast, and it seemed like we had a lot of things aligned in regards to our beliefs and educational background and some of the things that we were very passionate about. And so, yeah, the book project was titled A Language of Behavior, and it stemmed from my background as an administrator and trying to find a unique and different way to work with students in regards to their behavior. And so I was working and being very frustrated with just the traditional practice of detention, ISS and OSS, and trying to find a solution. So I wanted to find something to be a resource for educators. And I knew that my voice wasn't the one that should be alone in this project. I felt like I needed a partner. So I just happened to find the best one possible in Charlie Peck. <laughs> well, I paid you to say that. So thanks for, for following <laughs> through. <laughs> and you know, here's the other thing I love, Josh, is that you come from a trauma lens. You actually got some training. Can you explain that? Because it's super important. Yeah. So goodness, it's been almost 13 years now. My wife and I decided to become foster parents and it was a perfect time. At the time, I didn't realize it. I was getting extremely burnt out with the administrative job and the discipline that was going on the campus. But at the same time, my wife and I went through a lot of training to become foster parents. And so we went to uh, TCU with Professor Purvis to learn about trauma-informed practices. And of course, they're talking in regards to foster children. But the light bulb moment was when they were talking through the behaviors, specifically on the fight, flight, or freeze behaviors, uh, that the list that was going through was exactly what I was seeing on the campus. And so I started to realize like, okay, this training is showing us to do a lot of different techniques and strategies that are not occurring on the campus. However, the behaviors are the exact same. So that's when I started to dive in and dig into why is that? And is there a way to change that on our campus to mirror some of the things that are working for those who are in foster care? And that was kind of the charge at that time. And honestly, it was it saved my administrative career because I was looking to get out of education because I was just feeling defeated, where this gave me some hope and some data and some strategies to combat what was going on at the campus level. Yeah. So that's so fascinating because you and I have both seen it from similar lenses and also a little bit different lenses. And I'm wondering like how hopeful you are. We've been in talks about this book. We've actually started it. We've yeah. got a good chunk of it done. And I'm curious about what you're thinking. Like, do you think that there is hope? Do Can we change this thing around in our schools? Yes, I do think there's hope. And I, I love... Charlie, what you provided specifically with a lot of the research and the data of, you know, what's happened prior to and <laughs> things that haven't worked. And then, you know, we've been writing on just techniques and strategies to assist in the behaviors that are going on. Obviously, the pandemic has only heightened things. And, you know, there's a lot going on on campuses now that are being combated because of you know, the, the trauma that occurred during that time, in addition to just what's going on in general. So I think folks understand that there's a lot of chronic stress and a lot of trauma that's going on in the lives of our kids. They just don't know what to do after realizing that that's occurring. And so, you know, when we talk to educators, Charlie, all over the country, you know, they want what's best for the kids. They want to be there to support them. It's just, they don't have a guide to do that. And so I'm excited and hopeful with this book to kind of help them in a lot of different aspects to not only identify the behavior, but then also provide the resources necessary to really get to the, the root of the problem versus just trying to put a Band-Aid on it or sending the kid away because it's easier for those involved. Yeah. I mean, we talk a lot about that, about avoidance, because we don't know what to do and we don't know what to do. We do nothing or yeah. 
we, we send people away. Like you were talking ISS or even, you know, out of school expulsion, or um, I don't think yeah, you can suspension. do that easily suspension, <laughs> but I don't think you can even expel kids easily these days. That's a whole separate topic, I think, but, but pushing them away, mm-hmm. shutting them out. And, and I get it because as a teacher, as a teacher for 18 years in a high school classroom, some of those behaviors are big and scary. Yep. And so it's, it's important that we give people not only tools, but we have to get them before we even give them tools. And I think that's what this book does. That's kind of the goal mm-hmm. for me. You and I are doing this work in schools already with leaders and educators, but yeah. what do we do before we hand them the tools? If they're not ready to receive them and mm-hmm. understand and grasp the behavior in the first place, then that's kind of the missing link. So I'm excited about this book because that's my goal is kind of some principles or framework in order to receive that. Totally. And you talked about that mind frame too. And I think that's where we start, right? Is you got to have that mindset of understanding that there there's something underlying the behavior. And it, it is part of the educator's role and job to seek that out. Because it, like you said, if we just ignore it, we can't just magically have it disappear. And, you know, if the students don't have the skills necessary to be successful in the classroom, again, they're not just going to receive those <laughs> through a punishment. We, we have to do the work. And so, you know, education is going to look a little bit different and we need to have that lens to make sure that we're having an environment that's conducive to meeting the needs of those kids. But then also once those needs are met, that's when the learning begins. Yeah. And I think some people get thrown off by that word trauma or mm-hmm. punishment. And, and we are using these words over and over in education that keeps us from actually solving the problem that, that creates such a force of polarization that it keeps us from working together. I had a recent ex- experience with my own kid and it was, a. <laughs> I told you about it and I'm not going to tell everyone here, uh, but I will in practice, I promise it will roll out in one of our PD sessions because it it's valuable. I came in as the parent, but I'm also working with schools around here as the school mental health consultant. So it was interesting, but I'll tell you the first thing I did is I partnered with those teachers. I told them, I believed in the way that they were at least trying to approach my kid who has to take some ownership there, but also like, let's dive into why, what's going on underneath it. Um, but I also wanted to listen to them. And so we, we formed a team. It wasn't me coming in as this is what you have to do. This is what do you think I should do? And then we're all working together. So it's powerful. And I'll tell you, there has been change and it's been, it's been a good situation for them. I can't tell you how much they said, I'm glad that you're supporting me because teachers don't feel that. That was the next thing I was going to ask you, Josh. When we talked with our publisher about this Connect Ed, I know I'm super excited about working with Jimmy Casas again and Connect Ed. It has to work for other people other than just educators. So can you yeah. talk about what your hope is there too? Yeah. You know, in those first conversations with Jimmy, it was, you know, he was asking about like kind of like the target audience. And of course, <laughs> we've been both teachers, you social worker, I have administrator. But yeah, I think the principles that we've got is universal you know for myself and some of the stories that are in the book equate to parenthood i mean i think if you're a parent a lot of things that we're seeing at home translates just as much to to the classroom um, as far as working with children and, and their behaviors because you know that's the root of this book is that behavior is a language they're, they're telling us but they may not have the communication skills or maybe the emotional iq to understand what's going on in their brain, how they're feeling. And so the way that they're communicating to us is through a different means. And so, you know, how can we start to decode that and to understand that, you know, there is something going on and as a parent or as a business person or maybe an educator that we can look at these behaviors because it's it's not just students. I mean, some of our teachers are adults, our parents, <laughs> they're, they've all gone through you know, some really heartbreaking experiences and we're just seeing those, the effects of that. And so, you know, I think it's just a universal book in the sense that, you know, this is something that we're going to deal with regardless, you know, of our position. I mean, you can go to Walmart and (laughs) have an adverse situation there, you know, and I think, you know, looking at some of the things that we have in this book, that that experience too could be handled through the things that we're talking about. 
Yeah. I mean, somebody recently approached me who works for a corporation and they said, mm -hmm. is the work that you're doing applicable to employees? And I said, absolutely. Because one yeah. of the things that we're having, we're seeing those problems of kids going through the system, but not being ready for even post-secondary or the workforce. And so this is relational. This is all about relationship, but also very tangible tools that they can use in any yeah. aspect really of life when you're working with kids we're trying to lead a team of people working for sure. Relationally. Yeah. And you talk about future ready skills or essential skills. I mean, these are things like 2025 skills just popped up or 2027 too. And uh, I was looking at those and it's none of it's like retention of content. It's all about relationship building communication and collaboration and all these really important skills that we need to have built into the classroom and within our schools. So I think what we're talking about are just in line with you know, how to help our students be successful adults. Yeah. And you know what I hear a lot about, Josh? I hear teachers or leaders say, everybody tells me I've got to connect more with kids or I've got to connect more with staff. There's a disconnect, but they don't know how to make that connection necessarily. Correct. And they actually don't know what to do next. So they might be ready for it or they might think that, okay, I understand that that's there. I, I have an awareness, but then what do I do? So can you tell people who are listening what this book will do for them? Oh, my goodness. So, you know, that's what you're talking about with like the conversation we had with Jimmy is like, this is something that is going to roll out for implementation, you know, so it doesn't matter if you're a teacher, you can take these skills and implement it into your classroom specifically, or we can have the global lens here, the higher view and talk about how we can implement this, not only on a campus level, or maybe even a, a district level, as far as making sure that these skills are not only taught, but then also established within whatever setting you're in. You know, myself being a leader, I love kind of making sure that everyone understands, like, this is something that you can do as a large group but then also having it so that it could be something that a single teacher, if they really are passionate about this and maybe their campus isn't ready to move in this direction, but they know that they need to put this into their classroom. That's what I love about this resource is it doesn't matter where you are in education. It's something that you can take tomorrow and start to implement. Yes, I know. I can't wait to get it into the hands of other people. <laughs> a lot of people have been asking us, okay, when is the thing coming out? Because we would like to get a handle on it. We'd like to, we like to order it or, or whatever. So when do you think it's going to be available? Well, it sounds like this fall is kind of the, the idea of, of getting it out. So I would love to see it out in August, you know, as far as school starting and making sure that folks have the resource so they feel equipped when the school year starts. I know that's my goal. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm guessing you're sharing in that too, Charlie. Yeah. I mean, we have to have a similar goal. We're writing the darn thing together. <laughs> so, yes, I know. I am so eager to get this thing out there. And, and when we keep talking about it and talking with other people about it, yeah. it's just, it's, I've got all these thoughts as I know you do too. And it's just like, all right, we've got to get this down. We've just got to mm -hmm. get it in people's hands. Yeah. So I'm excited. So I think people listening, yes, we were, we're aiming for August it might be September or October, but it's going to be definitely this school year. So I'm yep. excited about that. For and sure. there is going to be a pre-sale list. So we'll get that out to people at some point too. But yeah, Charlie, do you want to talk about just email us too? Because I know we're going to be pushing out content for folks in regards to not only the resource, but some of the things that we have planned upcoming. So how can they maybe learn and get on an email list to, to get more information? Yes. Well, that's it because people have asked us so much about this. We decided we're going to do, we're going to do a webinar to share some of the information that we're putting into the book that's not available yet. And so Josh and I are doing that on April 9th at 7 PM. That's Eastern standard time. Cause I know that there are other, other uh, time zones people. <laughs> so, um, but April 9th at 7 PM Eastern, we're going to do this live and we're going to give you a taste of what we're putting in the book. And you're going to actually walk away with something very tangible to use immediately. So I'm excited about that. The way you can get to that webinar is you can just go to our show notes. We're going to put a link in the show notes, mm -hmm. but once you're there at the webinar, we're going to have a list that you can get on for the pre-sale at that point. And then again, we're going to give you some other tools that you can use right away. So the other thing you can do for me to get on my list, and Josh is going to tell you about his list in a second, is you can go to thrivingeducator.org if you go to that, it's my website, thrivingeducator.org. If you go to the top right, you'll see a button there. Just click on it. It says school mental health audit. 
It is a freebie. It is something that school mental health teams are using to start this conversation. It's a 15 page document. Get it for free. It's there, thrivingeducator.org. And then you'll get the updates on the webinar and the book. Okay, Josh, your turn. (laughs) <laughs> well, no, I think everyone should go to thrivingeducator.com and get that resource. I've actually got the resource myself. It's very useful. So highly recommend that. Um, head over to joshdamper.com for my uh, list and you can sign up. It's just on the front page there. Super simple. And then, uh, yeah, we're going to be providing a lot of information in regards to this resource. Um, I know for the webinar too, we were talking about doing a couple of giveaways too for folks. So if you're interested in potentially on getting a freebie, in addition to the contents you're going to be getting from the webinar, you know, make sure you're signed up for that. And the link again is in the show notes and you can get that from your podcast players, or you can go to our website too. I know joshtemper.com. If you go to episodes, you'll find the link in there also. Awesome. Is there anything we're missing at this point? Just the pure excitement that we have for this yeah. resource. <laughs> um, I know on social media, we were getting a lot of love, but you know, I was itching to get it out there because not only am I Super pumped and honored to write with you, but then also to be publishing with Connected Ed and Jimmy Casas. Yes, I know. I'm I'm really excited too. I truly am. Guys, sometimes, you know, you come across people in your network, but it doesn't always gel like this. And I think we've got something special. So I'm excited not only about the book coming out and the webinar, but about the work that we're going to do together after that. Yeah. Couldn't agree more. Awesome. All right. Well, thanks you all. And we'll see you at the webinar.